Republicans in the Tea Party conceding defeat in the budget crisis, getting almost nothing they wanted. Their popularity with the public, another casualty now. Republican Senator John McCain admitting as much last night to Greta Van Susteren. And, you know, I, I was, was sitting there watching Senator Cruz, as you were. Uh, he says he's standing with the American people. The American people disapprove of Republicans now by 74 percent, the highest ever since we've been taking any polls. Uh, the American people have been hurt to the tune of $40 billion while we went through an exercise that could not succeed. A new poll shows 49 percent of people look unfavorably on the Tea Party, nearly double what it was when the movement first took shape in 2010. Only 30 percent now have a favorable opinion. Democratic strategist Bernard Whitman was a pollster for President Bill Clinton. Brad Blakeman served as a deputy assistant to President George W. Bush. Brad, what do you make of that? Well, I think that uh, the Tea Party overplayed their hand and putting it in poker terms is they played a pair of deuces like they had a royal flush and the other side at best had a pair of sevens. Either way you lose. You, look, this is a town, Washington, that revolves around numbers and, and we didn't have the numbers to match our bravado. And in this town, the only way you pass legislation is by getting the numbers. And you don't only need the numbers in the House, you need them in the Senate, and you need a president who's going to sign the bill, or if he vetoes the bill, have mm -hmm. enough votes to override the veto. We didn't have any of that. And yet, if you take the game of math out of it, Bernard, some people are saying that actually the Tea Party and the supporters of the Tea Party more energized than ever before because of people like Mike Lee and Ted Cruz. Here's what the Tea Party is going to accomplish if they continue down this road. They're going to reduce the Republican Party to a permanent minority. What have they been able to do in a few short weeks? As John McCain indicated, they've cratered the Republican brand. 28% favorability, which is the lowest favorability rating for any party in the history of Gallup polling. They have actually caused the Democrats to take a six-point lead in the congressional horse race. Hmm. And they've done almost the unthinkable, which is drive support up for Obamacare, the one thing that they were against, by 25%. And the reason is they are fundamentally outside the mainstream. They're reckless in their tactics. And they're seemingly immune to reason. Well, well, but let me ask you this then. No, they're, Sen they're, Senator <laughs> Ted Cruz, let me ask this question, Brad. Because sure. Senator Ted Cruz has gone from, from almost obscurity to a household name right now. And, and I, I want you both to answer this question. Is Senator Ted Cruz toast now, or will he be the toast of the town, Brad? <laughs> Look, he certainly damaged himself by leading a charge that he could not uh, win. Uh, he's the general Custer of this particular battle. Now, whether he can recover or not is really up to him, because in, in less than uh, 100 days, we're going to be fighting this battle all over again. You have to pick your battles, and you have to win the battles you fully engage in. He fully engaged in a battle. There was no hope of okay. winning. But let me say this to Bernard about Obamacare. You're wrong. The vast majority of Americans have no better opinion than Obamacare today as they did before this started. As a matter of fact, the truth be told is uh, the Obamacare rollout is going to do more damage in the long and short term to Obamacare than anything we could have well, done you know, uh, with Obamacare. It's, it's interesting because it appears like the president's going to move directly on to another controversial topic uh, ahead of this 100 days and still a fiscal crisis. His staff now saying that they're going to declare immigration. They're <laughs> going for it, Bernard. And yet you got one of the main guys on the, on the other side, Congressman Raul Labrador, Republican Idaho. He says no go on that. The way that the Republicans were treated by the president during this whole fiscal crisis, we're not going to talk immigration with him. Your thoughts? Let me give some advice free to the Republican Party. If I were they, I would grab onto immigration reform like grim death. Why? Because <laughs> there's an opportunity here for the Republicans to actually show some leadership and do something good for the country. We have 11 million undocumented workers in this, in this country, many of them Latino, and their economic output is approaching about $200 billion. It's one in every 20 workers is undocumented. In some industries, one in every four workers in construction and agriculture undocumented. The fact is, immigration reform is fundamental to our economic security. And if the Republicans would get behind this, and I'm actually quite pessimistic they're going to, but if they could get behind this, they could do something good for the country, so Brad, do something good for immigration and these families, look, and do something so, good so, for the so party. So, Brad, will the White House use what some deem to be this political win now? Will they use that to push immigration reform? Look, the, the time is too short. Uh, right after the holidays, we're back in the same mess with the budget and the debt ceiling. Look, 
trust but verify. The Republicans are going to get together. There's not going to be any immigration reform until the president proves himself that he's going to be able to make the deals necessary on the hard choices on the budget and the debt ceiling. Once that has been successfully accomplished and the president has negotiated on those items, then we'll talk immigration reform, but not before. All right. I'll see you guys in 100 days then. <laughs> Looking forward. All right. <laughs> we'll be talking about it then. Brad, Bernard, thanks so much. Thank you.